Hello and welcome back to Having Fun with Paris. This is part three of uh, the video series of the Digital Pets. And we have our last three uh, Tamagotchi style pets to repair here. Um, so, I'm going to do this one last because of that screen and the non success of the first one that we attempted to repair with that, but we will get to it. Uh, and I guess uh, we'll just pick between either the Digipooch or the 101 Dalmatian. You know, they're both dog gigapets. I wonder if they're just kind of like a rebrand of the same uh, images that show up on the little display. But anyways, any mini money you're it. So he's going away. And we're going to start with the Digipooch. Now, going over my old uh, initial troubleshooting card, it did not power on, so we couldn't test the buttons. Obviously, needs cleaning. I have no clue if uh, it's a bit of corrosion issues. So, we're going to follow a basic format for all three of these. We're going to, we've already done our initial troubleshooting, so we're going to do a, a teardown uh, inspection slash more troubleshooting. Uh, from there, we should be able to do repair, uh, and then cleaning and reassembly. So basically, four things. All right, and we'll do that for all three things. All right. So without further ado, let's tear this guy down. top power supply to this. It looks like we got an image. Left and well left and right are working. This inner work. Inner is working. Looks like we got a little gain here. And let's check to see if uh, mode works. Yep, yeah, brings up the time. So really it's just corrosion on these battery terminals. Um, where's the reset at? Right about there. Yeah, reset works. So what we're gonna do... Daddy, are you fixing that one? I sure am, bud. With the bone and the footprints? Yeah, it's a doggy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have that one when you fix it. Well, we'll see. We got, we're going to be giving some of these away too, okay? Okay. Give me, give, give me that purple one. Well, that pur this purple one needs a lot of fixing. Yeah, yeah. So you can get it. Yeah. I thought that would work, but that is right bottom. Alright, well thank you, bud. I bounced it off. Alright, have fun bouncing off. Okay. Uh, son gets super excited when I start repairing things. Uh, that's my youngest son. Well... We can see the bit of corrosion. Uh, it looks like a, some old batteries were in here. Uh, here, around these terminals here. Same with these terminals here. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to clean these up with a little bit of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol, alcohol uh, IPA. Uh, maybe uh, just run some vinegar on them for a little bit. Uh, white vinegar or even just use the uh, the fiber cleaning brush I have as well. Yeah, either this one or this one over here. Try to use it as an abrasive to remove some of this corrosion. We'll clean it up still and, um, you know, just go from there testing again uh, next time with batteries in it. See how it does.
now that I got these terminals pretty well cleaned up, a lot of corrosion removed, uh, using some IPA, um, a brush, and a fiberglass pen, is I've got this little conductive paint pen. And what I'm going to do with it, and I'll show you what it looks like when you get the paint going in it. Where's a piece of paper? Might make things easier. It puts down a little fine layer of conductive material. Looks like there's uh, copper within the gel. It's very thin. It's almost like using a, a magic marker. But I am going to coat the, these areas a little bit. And hopefully it will dry and can become somewhat of a sacrificial layer for these uh, batteries. Make contact on their post. I put a little too much on that first one. So I can move this around, no issue. These conductive paint pens are very good at trace repair as well. Or some other things. Uh, looks like it's flashed off pretty well. So we're going to button it back up and see how it works. Side up on both batteries, heard something there for a second. And we'll hit a little reset button. And there we go. Seems the inner button still works. Left and right work. See the menu still going. All right. So we are done with this one, and we'll move on to the 101 Dalmatians. Okay, with the 101 Dalmatians, we have no power, so we couldn't test sound buttons, and obviously, just like with all the rest, we're going to give it a bit of a clean. Um, this one is exceptionally dirty. I think I'm going to clean it a little bit first. But, uh, following the same principles again. Uh, and let's move on. inspection. Uh, battery terminals again are pretty corroded. Probably old batteries. Battery acid leaking. Uh, I did notice something immediately off the back side of this board. Looks like a diode was swapped out for a ju jumper. Probably a zener diode uh, or a switching diode. Maybe for the reset 
in line some way with the reset line. I'm willing to believe. Uh, this resistor R3 here, R3, has been jumpered with a piece of wire as well. The resistor is not on the board. Uh, this capacitor down here is a little uh, cap here. Looks like uh, at least some heat. Let me see if I can get this to. It looks like somebody's touched it with some heat at some point. See a bit of extra solder or melted solder. It doesn't look like it's quite factory. Uh, this cap here is adhered, but you're missing quite a bit of solder on its. You know, it's going to be soldered on one side of the board, but usually you would like to see it come through to the other side, so we might touch that up. Uh, same with over here, but this all depends on if it's going to work or not. So I'm going to check it with my. Uh, bench top power supply first. Just these contacts here. Find good points to. Good points to put these clips on. Just to see if it turns on. See what it does. Okay, and it does turn on. So we do know that it is the battery contacts. Left and right's working, sound is working, inner is working, and just want to make sure that the mode button is working before we go any further. Otherwise, I'm going to break this board down even more. Mode button is working. Well, cool. So I think that's where we're going to take this one. Uh, we're going to be cleaning up more battery terminals again. Uh, with a little bit of IPA, we're going to use my uh, Buddy Paint uh, conductive paint pen. Down a little bead of conductive paint afterwards. And. Uh, test it out from there. Everything seems to be working so I'm not going to touch the board and not going to break it down further because uh, let's face facts you're all here to see me try to fix this one. So let's get busy. Quite a bit of cleanup. But, uh, moment of truth. Batteries both sides up. So, let's see how this does. Now, I probably should replace these uh, paper o rings if I don't have any. So, I'm just going to do without see how it functions just like with the other one Clear 
is it? Cool. So, this looks like it's running a very simi similar uh, little ROM. All the buttons work. And actually, we can move on to the next one now. Make sure reset works, and it does. Cool. So that's what we'll do next. tear down any further I'm going to hook my power supply up to it and check this one uh, previous conditions see PC puppy LCD bad no power sound buttons couldn't check anything um, interesting enough there is a transistor on this board i have to look up whether that's a PMP or an MPN. be interested to know what it's driving. Again, there's either been some repairs or maybe this is just sloppy leftover from factory. But you've got some questionable solder joints. You have quite a bit of flux left on the board. It's not good for longevity. Um, this inductor was actually bit of glue like a rubber cement uh, up towards the side so it was a little bit hard prying this off because I was trying to pull the inductor up off the board. I laid it over as close as possible to where it originally was. But uh, let's hook up this power supply and just see what happens. I imagine some of the power issues is because there is a mild bit of corrosion on these terminals. Come on. Alright. Hopefully I don't break any of these wires because they're a lot finer than the previous ones. Okay, power supply is on. So uh, attempt to do a reset. Getting nothing. Let me make sure I'm oh, got something there. Oh, and this wire came loose. I just put the power supply up to there. And we got a picture. Let's reset it. Very similar to one of the uh, other ones. Oh, left and right is working. Inner is working. A little guessing game. Let's see if we can exit out. we gotta play through the game. Alright, mode button does work as well. Uh, move this off to the side somewhere, get rid of that bleed. Obviously going to have to solder back in this uh, negative lead here for our batteries. Uh, but at least we uh, know that it does function. 
So that's at least some good news and hopefully we don't make this worse than what it is. Poking around this board for a little bit, I uh, wanted to annotate what size, uh, what frequency the crystal oscillates at. Uh, 32.7 kilohertz, you can see right there, underneath the automatic measurement menu. Uh, give me one second to get rid of that measurements menu. Look at that sine wave, too. You can see it's nice and rounded upper and lower uh, uh, peaks they don't look too offset uh, nothing's looking weird as in like one peak is shifted or not quite symmetrical so I'll say that crystal is pretty good uh, usually your crystal is either not going to oscillate at the right frequency or you'll, you probably saw this in uh, video one when I showed you that crystal, the uh, upper peak and lower peak were kind of just um, asymmetrical, I guess would be the right word for it. Uh, that's also a sign of a crystal starting to go bad. But you really want to to have uh, a symmetrical as possible uh, AC wave waveform when you're looking at your crystals. I um, wonder if I could do it one time and capture it. That's what I'll do. Hold on one second. Alright. What you really want, and let me move this over. Is you want symmetry. Man, there's a big glare over there coming from outside. Let's see if I can get this up this way. You want symmetry at your upper and lower peaks. You don't want anything to look asymmetrical. If I'm looking at this and I place the, the peak uh, right here on the graticle where I can evenly split it in half, I can see that they're crossing this horizontal uh, axes around the same points. And you can measure the bandwidth of this frequency as well if you wanted to uh, between certain pe uh, periods, say left to right here, left to right here, left to right here. Um, but anyways, just figure I'd take a second just to show that. So, curiosity yeah, got better to me. And so I did a bit of poking around this board again. And did my best to quasi uh, reverse engineer the PCB here for our next Tamagotchi pet. Found some close similarities to the last one I did, the Tiger Electronics ones. Kids are being super loud. They're home from school. Uh, you know, still using a 32.7 kilohertz crystal. Uh, we have a 47 microfarad decoupling capacitor here. Uh, 30, 360 kilo ohm resistor tied to S5. That's our reset switch. Uh, D1 is a diode. That is this first diode here. I believe to be battery. Uh, protection, reverse battery protection. Uh, I was able to actually determine the orientation of this NPN transistor off of this board because it's actually labeled the uh, emitter and collector and base. It's actually a 9014 NPN. So whereas I didn't know what type of orientation was here, I 100% got this wrong and it wouldn't make sense either way to have the base of a transistor NPN transistor tied to 
uh, ground because if you did it would never conduct let's, let's be honest you need a positive bias at the base in order for it to work so this guy right here from the last uh, tire electronics I am going to do a little digital edit to it and you'll see that on the circuit diagram once uploaded to the site but uh, let's see what can we go on about well the transistor is actually what's driving this piece uh, piezoelectric speaker uh, it's more of a buzzer per se uh, you present your highs and lows to it to get it to produce a sound you still have a uh, resin resonant inductor in between uh, one side of the speaker to the other uh, as previously mentioned uh, there to do a bit of filtering uh, either DC or, or noise filtering um, you also have these protection diodes here uh, these were these two sitting right here on the PCB this one here and this one here uh, there's a capacitor tied in between this going to the cob I don't know what the uh, capacitance is of that capacitor so right now it's just got a question mark and then outside the uh, on the other side of the diode on the um, on the cathode side is a one mega uh, resistor going to the cob as well. Now I haven't quite figured out what these diodes. Uh, switching diodes, uh, zener diodes, whatever they are, what exactly they're for, maybe protection of the speaker itself, I mean, uh, this type of speaker, uh, say if I was to drop it on the ground, uh, can create a, a voltage spike, uh, or arcing from your positive, uh, your B positive rail so it might be there to protect the speaker um, hmm could also be the point in which programming is in f for the IC here whatever stored in, in memory could be used for that as well you know I'm just not too sure pretty sure there's somebody smarter in the comment section who could uh, put something in the doobly-doo and explain that piece um what else LCD as well uh, two more unmarked capacitors again I didn't check the, uh, the rating of those I've just labeled them C5 question mark C6 question mark going to ground uh, anywhere you see a ground that's not specifically tied to this ground rail I just had the ground symbol there um, and then a uh, little 47 kilo ohm resistor that came out of the cob and then right back in not too sure what that's used for because I don't know the topology of um, any of the circuitry inside of here so it is what it is anywho with uh, this guy being made I'll have it uploaded to the site uh, for somebody else you all or somebody to look at and critique but uh, it's going to be time to try to move to this LCD display, see if we can get rid of the bleed and move to one side. Now there was a, uh, let's go the other way around, film, so you can see it now, we'll be pushing that out to the side. Yeah. It's either going to be a massive success or a massive failure or somewhere in between. How's that? Okay. So there are actually uh, there's actually polarizing film on both sides of the glass. Uh, this one's free floating. You can see that little the bleed right there. Now the colors are inverted. The monochrome color is inverted. Um, 
I'll have to be careful because there's another one on this side as well. Oh, it's got adhesive on the back side. I don't want to tear it, so I'll be taking it off with a little bit of IPA. Now with that out of the way, it's going to be the process of uh, applying pressure to this point here. Now I can see this, you might not be able to see it on the camera, Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. But the, uh, the bleed is right in this area here, you can just barely make it out. But uh, we'll use that same process we did last time. You know what they say about uh, insanity. When something doesn't work, just keep trying it again. So let's see how this goes. tried kind of a different approach this time and discovered something while in the middle of getting that bleed to move out of the way. Uh, let me put these on and orient it the right way. As you can see, I don't know if you can tell this or not, because of the glare of the light from my uh, LED on my phone. But even with the polarizing film in place, there is no bleed anymore. Can I get this to focus? On this screen, minus I know that's going to be hard to tell, so I do apologize. Couple small dots right in here. So what I discovered was as I was heating it up and moving it back and forth, first using this uh, plastic spudger, that when I took the wooden handle of my brush and applied pressure and went in a circular motion, it evenly dispersed that bleed and prob probably uh, repopulated it into, into even areas around the actual display instead of it being pooled all into one spot. I don't know if this screen is going to work post doing that. But we're going to find out anyways, because now it's going to be putting this back together.
and uh, for everybody to see. Look at that. Ooh. I feel like doing the My May Vince. Yes! I mean, you can kind of see where that uh, bleed was dispersed on the screen. There's a little bit of dark areas, but it's not one big blob anymore. So you got a lot of uh, real estate back on this display, which is phenomenal. So I'm super happy with this one. Left and right work. Mode button works. Enter button works. PC puppy repaired. I like it. I think it's going to be a rather lasting fix as well. At least I hope so. We'll see. But, uh, anyways, if you like this series of video, um, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, share the video as well if you enjoyed it. My son's giving me a thumbs up as well. And uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully you found this entertaining, uh, somewhat enjoyable. So, yeah, I got nothing else. Take care. Bye.